Hi everybody, uh, today we have a really exciting interview. Um, so we are joined by Mr. Hirofumi Kurino. Uh, Kurino-san was the former managing director and chief creative officer for United Arrows and part of the founding team of United Arrows. Um, he has since moved on and he's now the senior advisor of United Arrows as well as the advisor to his new company, Humanos. Yes. So Kurino-san, thank you so much for having us today. I'm Welcome. really appreciative of your time. Welcome. Um, Let's get started. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in this industry? Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, now I'm working with uh, two different companies. Mm. One is, like you said, uh, United Towers. Mm. Uh, 1989, uh, we started in United Towers. Mm. So it's uh, already 33 years. Wow. And I was in a managing board mm. from the beginning until 2008 or 9. Mm. Then I become uh, like a more freelance base, but mm. still work as a, a, a senior advisor mm. for United House. I see. Then last year, 2021, mm. uh, me and uh, my bus business partner Nakao-san mm. decided to start this new company, Humanos. Mm. And uh, hum originally, the activity of Humanos itself we have in United Arrows. Mm. So uh, we are Asian mm. for uh, Caruso, this mm. jacket, mm -hmm. and also uh, Asian for uh, French shirts maker mm. and uh, Italian uh, silk weaver. I see. So, uh, so this is uh, like a 40, oh, 45 years i working in the uh, fashion industry. Wow. <laughs> And how was it when you got started? What, what were you doing when you first got started? Uh, in 1977, mm. I graduated university. Mm. When I was in university, I studied uh, uh, iconography. I see. Yeah. So uh, my main subject mm. was like uh, how to analyze mm. uh, uh, Renaissance painting. Okay. Or uh, like uh, how to understand. I see. Those uh, uh, picture or uh, uh, mm, some images. I see. So you can image the uh, uh, Da Vinci Code. Mm -hmm. uh, my my study was the same, uh, nearly the same as the uh, the, the key person. I see. It was sort of a blend of art history and um, communication, uh, I suppose. Yes. And, uh, and sociology. Uh, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, when I was in university, I never thought that uh, this study mm. can be uh, helpful for my future job. <laughs> okay. Because uh, like uh, analyzation of uh, Renaissance painting mm. or uh, like uh, researching the iconography yeah. is not popular. Right. And uh, Honestly speaking, it's not easy to make money. Yeah. And uh, graduated in 1977, I joined a very big uh, retail company called Suzuya. Okay. That was uh, mostly women's mm. uh, retail store mm. chain. Mm -hmm. So they have also they have uh, uh, in the peak uh, they have store in New York and Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, I was there one year and a half. And uh, I uh, quit the Suzia, mm. then joined Beams from 1978. Uh, and I spent 11 years in Beams. Mm. And then 1989, we uh, decided to start our own company. I see. So most of my life, I spent uh, working in the fashion industry. I see. Yeah. And what was that like, like leaving Beams and starting United Arrows? Yeah. Like, was it quite a, or was it something you were very ready to do, or was it something that was quite scary at the time? Oh, no, no, that was like, uh, if I look back, mm. maybe it's just a matter of timing, I think. Mm. Because uh, Beams was so successful, mm. and uh, we have a lot of energy, mm. idea, mm. maybe, in 1989, the, the year we independent, mm. it's a kind of a, like a spin off or a spin out. Mm. Uh, me and my uh, team mm. 
has a lot of idea mm -hmm. and uh, it's sometimes uh, it's too modern or too new to our former company. Mm -hmm. So we need a place to try our idea. Mm -hmm. So we made the uh, United Tarot. So si. still I remember uh, my first uh, business trip in 1990, uh, I went to Barcelona, uh, the big trade show called Gaudi Ombre. Okay. And also I went to Ireland mm. uh, at that moment uh, uh, in Dublin, mm. a kind of a, like a fashion week was there. Okay. And we went to Florence for Pitti Uomo, then Milan. And Paris, oh, also in London. So that was... Like wow, a that's a lot. You know, yes, yeah. three weeks, four weeks. Mm. So we are just starting our company mm -hmm. and w we have no merchandising. So we keep knocking all the door mm. of uh, the company we used to know, we used to knew. Mm -hmm. All of them said no. Mm. Because uh, when we are in our former company, uh, we are a good customer. Mm -hmm. Beams was a good customer yeah. with them. Yeah. So uh, they don't want to start with the competitor. Mm. So your competitor, so buy. Yeah. Your competitor, so buy. Right, I oh. see. So each door is very tough. And uh, each conversation is very tough. So yeah. one of our young buyer, he's crying. Wow, really? <laughs> Dang. So we have to find out something new not uh, the, uh, the company who uh, not dealing in the past. Mm. Otherwise, you know, oh, most of all the good company uh, dealing with like a, then our f uh, com competitor. Mm. So the, the beginning was very tough, yeah. but it's a very good uh, experience. That's why uh, still uh, we have energy or curiosity to, to find new things mm. and uh, using our foot, yeah. our eye, yeah. uh, mouth to find new things or meeting new people. Mm. When United Arrows opened, was there this term select shop? Like, is that how you guys considered the business or is that a new term? Uh, the, the style of the, the shop mm. was a, already exist, mm. but the select shop is like a, as you know, it's a Japanese, uh, I mean, Japanese English. Mm. It, outside of Japan, people call multi-label shop mm. or a concept shop. Mm. But uh, just the late 80s, mm. uh, people start saying select shop. Mm. And uh, 1990, 1989, we uh, uh, starting our company. And 1990, our first shop, was in Meiji Dori, mm. Shibuya. Still, the, the, the word select shop is, world itself is, exists, but the, nobody can understand. Mm. But our shop was opened in uh, uh, July 1990. Mm -hmm. Same year, in November, Barney's uh, opened mm. in Shinjuku. Their first uh, uh, Japan shop in, near to Isetan. So now uh, the, the people can, uh, can realize that, ah, this is a select shop. So, mm. you know, this is a very interesting uh, um, experience for me. If something just one, it's hard to recognize. Yeah. But if something becomes more than two, yeah. you can compare and then you can understand what yeah. the meaning. It's very interesting. There's almost like a similarity between that and the world of influencers and micro influencers now. Uh -huh. right? Like mm -hmm. when you're doing marketing for consumer products, yeah. you know, micro influencers are really powerful. And, yeah. and I think the power comes from the fact that a lot of people are talking about something, mm. but each one in a little bit of a different way. Yeah. And maybe when people hear it in a few different ways, they yeah. are forced to analyze it and, mm -hmm. and try to figure it out. As mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. just like there was Barney's and there was United Arrows, yeah. people hear both and they have to try and figure out yeah. what does that actually mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. The same thing I can say to like uh, ethnic food. Mm. Uh, you know, I like uh, Asian food, mm. but 
when I was, uh, when we were in 80s, only Chinese food might be, exist. Then we have Vietnamese, Thailandese, mm. and uh, uh, Indonesian. Mm. We can compare the, the difference. Yeah. We can taste. Yeah. And we can say like, dislike. Yeah. That's why the ethnic food itself becomes the culture. Yeah. So, you know, do, do you like Pakchi? Pakchi? Pakchi. Uh, ah, cilantro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in 1980s, mm. in a Thai restaurant in Tokyo, mm -hmm. I tried Pakshi, uh -huh. and uh, that was a little bit shock. Really? S huh. Smell strange, <laughs> taste strange. Okay. But, you know, time by time, I get used to this. Mm. And uh, at that moment, I thought that this might never be popular in Japan. <laughs> okay. But now, as you know, there's a lot of uh, like a pakchi restaurant yeah. or pakchi rice, yeah. or maybe you can find a pakchi gum. Yeah. Many interesting pakchi related food right. are now uh, very popular in Japan. So, so this is a very interesting uh, like uh, um, phenomenon mm. or uh, like uh, recognize the 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 things. Mm -hmm or recognize uh, the culture right. to see, to see, compare, mm. experience, mm. then you, you have the, the vision. Mm. Um, you know, when you were selecting products for United Arabs, did you, did you get that feeling of like you see something new, you know, and you were kind of a pioneer, and you would just think to yourself, this is not going to work in Japan? Or were you always willing to try? Like, like Pakchi. Like Pakchi. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, my way, mm. or Mr. Shigemat's way, mm. my former boss, mm. is let's try. Mm. If you feel good, mm. let's try. If you feel like a, it's not your taste, mm. we never touch. But if you feel good, still, you know, if you feel like uh, it is not easy for Japanese market, but still it's worth trying, mm. we try. Mm. So... Maybe this is uh, before United Taros, the, the Japanese uh, uh, merchandising mm. is more uh, conservative, I think. Mm. But uh, our way is more free, more flexible. Mm. Still, I remember in 1986, 78, mm. I was in Beams. Mm. And uh, I was a, a director of uh, Beams F. Mm. In our shop, we selling uh, Thai from John Comfort. Mm. And same time, we selling uh, the, uh, the uh, silk stole muffler scarf mm. from Atro. Mm. Then uh, Michael Drake and Charles Hill, <laughs> they came to our shop. Yeah, and uh, the, they ask, who is uh, choosing this uh, merchandising? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, oh, me. And uh, they like my taste. Mm. And uh, especially Michael Drake, mm. the original founder of Drake's, yeah. he really likes my taste. And uh, he really wants to do, deal with us. Mm. Then our business started. Mm. So, because of uh, the, the, my flexible way of uh, merchandising. Mm. So, we have uh, John Comfort's tie, but in the same time, we have Atro mm. or uh, like uh, some designer's clothes mm. together. So, this might be uh, radical for, for the late 80s, uh, the, the, like a uh, men's store, mm. but uh, it uh, makes sense. Yeah. Like it was, it was eclectic at a time when people were not prepared to be so eclectic. What do you, th what do you think it was about United Arrows that that kind of enabled all these Japanese consumers to become so accepting of like new styles of new fashions? Because uh, mm. there's the the merchandise itself, yeah. which is well selected. But yeah. there must be more than that to convince people, right? It's uh, maybe you're the 
most uh, uh, suitable person to have uh, this conversation because we're doing the same thing. Mm. You're always uh, uh, saying the, the salesperson mm. or in the shop mm. is most important. Mm. Same as me. For sure. You were on the shop floor a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, in this uh, April, mm -hmm. in uh, Parco, one of the, the, the very successful uh, uh, shopping, like shopping building mm. in Shibuya, mm. uh, I did a pop-up store mm. three weeks, together with the uh, Garçon, mm. New, ba New Balance, and United Towers. Mm. So this combination itself is, is very fresh. Mm. And uh, this uh, idea is o o also very fresh. Mm. But I want to be there to explain what is this concept. Mm. So nearly every day I was in the, in the store. Mm. So still to be in the store, to meeting people, yeah. is the most important part of uh, myself mm. and uh, the people who are working in the fashion. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like that's... This was a conversation I had yesterday, actually, with Yamamoto-san, Taylor Cade. And he was talking about what was important to him when it came to fashion was the vibe. Right? Mm. I know it sounds like a bit of a silly word, but I think it's a very important word when it comes to selling fashion. Right? Mm. You have to... The vibe is like a certain energy mm. that people can tune into and pick up on. Yeah. And if it agrees with them, mm. they like it and they can move forward mm. with purchasing or with learning more or whatever it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, mm. yeah. So, so what was that pop-up about? What was the theme of it? Oh, uh, the Japanese title is Jiyuna Sebiro. Mm. It's uh, uh, suits of uh, free, mm. suits of freedom. Mm. So recently, mm. until recent, uh, the, the suits and jacket is uh, the image is mm, too much packed in the, like a business businessman. Yes, serious guy. Yes. But originally, uh, we can remember that when we are in uh, 50s, 60s, mm. wearing suits is stylish. Mm. Early Beatles, early Rolling Stones, yeah. Brian Ferry, yeah. they're all wearing suits. Yeah. So suit is cool. Yeah. So uh, if you have a free spirit, yeah. like uh, uh, Mick Jagger or yeah. Brian Ferry, your suits can be not a con uh, conservative outfit. Mm. So I want to uh, bring back this free spirit mm. to to suits. Mm. So that's why uh, the combination is communication, mm. New Balance, mm. and United Towers. Mm. So uh, our merchandising is uh, uh, half communication, half uh, United Towers, including New Balance shoes, mm -hmm. but no leather shoes mm. and no ties. Mm. So. Uh, uh, Originally, I like Thai, yeah. but in that show, uh, I uh, think uh, we need a strong message. Mm. That's why we never put the, the Thai mm. or leather shoes in that store. Mm. So uh, instead of that, uh, uh, we merchandising scarf. Mm. So scarf, jacket, mm. shirts mm. or t-shirts mm. and trainers is our style uh, and work together with uh, uh, communication. Mm. So uh, the, the shop itself is a very good success. That's great. Uh, Congratulations. I'm very happy. Do you feel like it's an exciting moment now? You know, now that we've gone through two and a half years of COVID, <laughs> like people aren't wearing suits as much to the office. But I think the nice thing is that it means that a lot of people who want to wear suits, a lot of people are wearing suits are wearing it because they want to wear it. And it gives you a bit more opportunity to try different things. Do you agree with that or what do you think? You know, uh, before COVID, the fashion industry, especially men's fashion industry, mm. is already in a, like a turning point. Mm. And many people said uh, casual Friday mm. or, or dress up Monday. <laughs> so so the, the, like uh, no tie style or mm. no jacket style mm. becomes too popular. Mm. And uh, classic uh, uh, men's clothing business mm. is, had a very tough time. Mm. Then COVID came, mm. so uh, we should think about uh, how we skip to going to office. Mm. So we can we try 
many idea about uh, working in our house, mm. our room, mm. and doing a uh, job. Mm. So it means, oh, we never need suits anymore mm. in general. Mm. But I don't think so, and my teammate never think so, mm. because, like I said, the suit is cool. Mm. So um, we keep selling the suits and mm. ties and jacket. Mm. Maybe the the selling of the tie is once a little bit like a down because mm. of the COVID, mm. but suits and jacket. If we keep selling and keep saying that oh, this is cool, mm. you need this. Mm. And uh, step by step, uh, our kind of shop is going up yeah. because we never use COVID as an excuse. Yeah. There's too many excuses and uh, that, you know, there's too many complaints. Mm. So uh, uh, be because of the COVID, because of the casual Friday, mm. come on, if you are uh, good with your customer, mm. if you have uh, good merchandising, mm. and uh, if you try your best to entertain your customer, mm. still there's a way. Yeah. And uh, happily, after COVID or n near before the end of the COVID, our sales goes up, from, uh, especially from uh, last uh, December. Mm. Uh, uh, like a, like a dress up mm. is coming back. Mm. And especially after this March, we see more numbers of uh, selling ties mm. and uh, the suits, jacket. Mm. And uh, I cannot say this is like a coming back mm -hmm. or going back. Mm. So happily, this uh, two and a half period, we can take this as a cool down period. Yeah. To think, like, uh, is it you really need this? You really like this? Mm. And uh, it's like a, like a testing. Mm. And uh, finally, uh, the test is nearly over. Mm. And we can say yes. Still, I love jacket. Still, mm. I love tie. Mm -hmm. And we can say, uh, still, we we love fashion. Mm. It's interesting. Um, you have been doing this for long enough that yeah. you've probably seen the pendulum of fashion swing quite a few times. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Because I know you're also, you take sustainability seriously, you take kind of overconsumption seriously as well. Yeah. Like, but at the same time, you know, when you're in fashion, you also need things to change a little bit. Yeah. Because people get bored. Mm. Like, how do you balance all of this? You know, change is, is important, mm. but I don't think new is important. Mm. So you can change the world, you can change your feeling mm. by some existing thing. Mm. And uh, the 19, until 1990s or like a late 20th century concept is buy, buy, yeah. buy new thing, buy yeah. new thing. If you buy new thing, it makes you happy. That mm. was the late 20th century's concept. Mm. And uh, it was uh, the marketing. Mm. But uh, after uh, uh, fast fashion, mm. people realized that, oh, this is too much. Mm. There's so many poor things, so, so many cheap things, so many meaningless things are in the, in the street. Mm. So people fed up with the consumering itself. Mm. Then mm, some people are going to more creative. Some people are going to more craftsman, craftsman oriented, mm. craftsmanship oriented. Mm. So this creativity, craftsmanship mm. becomes a more and more important. Mm. So now this uh, timing of uh, nearly the end of the COVID the uh, phenomenon. Mm. Uh, I can see this. W we can see the new world. Mm. Yeah, I, f I feel that really strongly in Japan. Yes, more so than other countries. I like, think this so. time I came here, I was surprised by 
like it just felt like all the fast fashion brands had kind of receded a little bit and there was a lot more attention everywhere being paid to like smaller brands, smaller quantities, yeah. better quality, yeah. more craftsmanship. Yeah. And actually I visited a bunch of factories this trip as well and mm -hmm. it was just such a pleasure to see the factories doing well, but doing well and filled with young people. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that despite the fact that COVID has been very difficult, mm. I think it's been a really good sort of renewal. You know, it's sort of like sometimes things have to die a little bit before mm. they can be renewed properly. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, a, maybe a new, the start of a new golden age for fashion in Japan. I, ho I, hope, I hope so. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Because, yeah. like, do you feel like fashion in Japan got a little bloated, got a little too much for a while? Yeah, until recent, that was uh, like a too much mm. and too much, too much production, too much information, mm. too too many shop, mm. destroying or uh, devaluates the, the fashion. Yeah, but now, okay, we are we we were in the bottom. Mm. So from the bottom, you can see things. If you're if you're in a in a stay in the same place, mm. you just see the same degree. Mm. But the, if you're going down, mm. you can see things more clear. Mm. But if you're like a too high, mm. everything just look down. Everything looks like little ants. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. interesting. So important is uh, like a uh, open mind mm. and uh, curiosity mm. and uh, see things from the many different sides. Mm. Can we talk a little bit about craftsmanship in Japan? Mm -hmm. You and I had a good conversation about this at lunch the yeah, other day. Yeah, yeah. Um, the culture of craftsmanship in Japan. Yeah. What makes Japan so special when it comes to craftsmanship? Mm, we have a lot of reason. Mm. But uh, uh, originally, we respect the the people using their hand. Mm. Uh, still, the many uh, uh, craftsmanship oriented production in Japan mm. is exist, mm. like a knife, hojo, mm. or a hand weaving basket, mm. or a kimono. Mm. And uh, using hand is still meaning mm. in Japan. Mm. When, when COVID was in peak in France, one of the, the French minister said, uh, not the COVID beaten fr France, mm. but the, the concept of uh, not producing production in France is beating France. Because mm. the peak of the, the COVID in uh, France, mm. they cannot get masks, mm. they cannot get uh, surgic, sur ga surgical gowns. Surgical yeah. gowns. Yeah. Yeah. In Japan, on the first period, wow, how, how can I say, how, mm. how are we going to do? Mm. But many uh, industry quickly uh, reaction to this. Mm. So a uh, uh, sewing factory mm. or a fabric making uh, factory mm. uh, try to make mask mm. and surgical gown. Mm. So it's not a, for the number, is not enough as like a huge uh, increase in number of the, the COVID effect, mm. but still it makes sense. Yeah. So if you just keep waiting from mm. the production, production from China, mm. and you're living in a Paris or mm. in New York, mm. just waiting, waiting, mm. it's just waiting. Mm. So uh, happily in Japan, we still have like a production background. Mm. And uh, uh, unless we can ha we have this uh, production background mm. basis mm. we can use this yeah and we can change yeah or a uh, 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 chef mm. the food culture mm. in japan is so good mm. Definitely. So sometimes too good <laughs> <laughs> so uh, still you know you can see many good uh, chef mm. famous and famous yeah expensive and expensive mm. even for the ramen restaurant mm. The, the like a uh, boiling of the the the, the men mm. the noodle mm. ha you need a skill yeah and people watching yeah how he uh, uh boiling the, mm. the noodle yeah so i think i love this culture yeah and uh happy the uh, basis of this might be the uh, respect for the hand mm. 
something else that I think related to craftsmanship, something I find Japanese people are, are very aware of is they can accept when things are not perfect. Because, you know, if you do things by hand, inevitably things are not perfect. Where do you think this attitude came from? Originally, uh, in Japan, we have this. Mm. Do you know, Kintsugi? Um, yeah. Uh, Where you patch something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, if you have uh, your favorite dish mm. or a bowl, mm. uh, by accident you broke it, mm. in the Western concept, it's over. Mm. But in Japanese concept, okay, let's make it uh, uh, mm, to, to glue it. Mm. And in the, the kintsugi way, it's a glue it by uh, uh, the gold and mm. the glue or uh, like something mixed mm. and the glue it. Mm. There's a new bowl, mm. new dish, sometimes much more expensive mm. than the, the, the new one. Mm. And in the, the tea ceremony, mm. I think uh, uh, some months, like a... Uh, August mm. or uh, October mm. is a month for using uh, kintsugi, the, the month for mm. using unperfect uh, 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 like uh, uh, teacup. Mm. So happily, we have this um, culture of uh, unperfect mm. is another perfect or mm. perfect is never perfect. Mm. Or uh, Yanagi Muneyoshi, Yanagi Sori, mm. uh, Japanese, uh, uh, how can I say, mm. cultural leader mm. or uh, uh, a kind of a designer. Okay. His uh, uh, view for or minge, uh, the, the Japanese uh, uh, handcraft, mm. like a hand weaving basket mm. or a chair, mm. is based on this. So, mm. uh, not chasing perfect but uh, 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 try to make a good thing mm. and a useful thing. Not yeah. just to see, yeah. not, not, the, the, not the picture on the wall, yeah. but using the, the, the mag cup, using the dish, yeah. using the chopstick. So the daily, daily, production, daily use production mm. is meaningful. So happily still we have this. Yeah. I think this goes back to also like Japanese consumer habits of like, mm, even when you're buying, like Japanese fashion customers, when they buy a piece of clothing, yeah. they actually do intend to use it for quite a long time. Yeah. And they take care of it. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's, yeah. And it's meaningful. Yes. You know, and I think it's related to that concept. I think so. And I think it's, it's great because it, it means that they, they take the value of this thing seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. when you were saying earlier with fast fashion, as things get cheaper, the whole category gets devalued. It's not just that item is devalued. Mm. Everything in yeah. the category is devalued. Yeah. And yeah. I love clothing, yeah. you know, and I, I take my clothing really seriously. And clothing always looks better when it's mm. well made and it lasts for a long yeah. time. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break. Yeah. And we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah.